I love the, I love it. I don't even know what it is, and I love it. So you can record if you want. Brian is um, talking me through. I guess we are recording. setting up a. Uh, a I have I've had a Twitter account since like 2009. Um, I've it's had lots of different um, <laughs> looks and feels and and uh, titles and yeah. Never really uh, been consistent with it. I think for, at one point I was just I had uh, I think anytime I posted on Facebook or my website it would auto post. Yeah, Twitter. it was all connected at one point through Hootsuite or who knows what. So you're September 2009. I am March 2009. Wow. <laughs> so yep, That's OG awesome. OG Twitter heads right here. I, think Sla- I started Facebook when, I still, when you still had to have a. Um, College email. Yeah, I believe it. I was there. 2006. Whenever the hell that was. Yeah. So yeah, we work. We, yeah, we're old. We knew we knew what life <laughs> was like before the internet, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I built my my whole DJ company, my whole DJ brand before social media. Wow. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, everything was word of mouth and emails and phone calls and. Phone calls. Phone calls. Actually calling people is wild. I've been watching that um, Netflix documentary, Blue Zones, and one of the common threads of, on anywhere is socializing as you get older. Like so many people in America, they get stuck in like a home and they just by yourself or just stuck at your own home and you just don't get out. And just actually talking to other human beings, I think they said adds like 15 years to your life. <laughs> No, I believe it. Or, or, or the inverse is true. Yeah. Not talking mm-hmm. to other human beings can deduct 15 years from your yeah, life. That's... So that's why we're here talking. Yeah. And, and doing it. We can do the computer and, and, and do the talking at the same time. <laughs> All right. Are you recording right now? I am. Oh. Yeah, we're live. You're we're live? We're streaming. We're just oh, recording. I'm like, yeah, crap. Okay. I have to change some of the, the live. It's a little bit different than knowing that it's going to be edited in post it's a whole different thing okay so here here's basically where we're at i finally convinced you to get on twitter i'm on twitter i mean i know you're on twitter but like you've had a twitter account now you're actually on twitter i'm getting more x so there's so many reasons why x is so hype right now and forget all the nonsense about the political whether elon and this and that is going X right now is the only community where you can actually build a community and you can do it organically more than anything else. That's why I keep trying to get you guys on it because you you can literally reach the ends of the earth with just one tweet or one post, which you cannot do. Anyone who's on any social media platform knows this. You can't do it on Instagram. They're not going to push your post. You, you can't do it on Facebook. They're not going to push your post. It's only to friends of friends of friends and whatever. And it's not its not meant for this social engagement. Like Twitter is essentially the, you know, the town square as, it's, as so it stands. So what's the difference? Is like the algorithm like more like... Like just lets more through, or is it like less? Well, I mean, I don't like know. Certain... I, I don't know by the depths of the code and all of that sort of stuff. But basically, the way that it's designed. So right now, I can tweet at, you know, Christian Ronaldo or so like whoever, right? More often than not, the people who yeah, yes, there are there are social media managers and there are people that do engagement and responses and so on. But until you reach such a level. More often than not, the people who are using Twitter are using it straight from their phone, okay. right? So that's one thing you want to make sure of. If you're using Twitter in, in that type of way, understand that most people are consuming Twitter on mobile. They're mostly doing everything on mobile. But, but there is a world of online community that, that only consumes Twitter on desktop because for you know optimization, not being distracted, notification, all, all this other stuff. But anyway... Um, so the, twi- with what you can do with X is you can you can reach people directly, which is unique to any other space. Not only can you potentially go global with any single high value tweet or high highly controversial tweet right. or whatever, but you're actually getting responses from 
the actual people, which is one which is unique to any any um, platform, and uh, it's one of my favorite things. So what? So if, um, I'm trying to grow an audience for uh, helping. Cause my my mission now is to help others help others, uh, especially fitness and wellness entrepreneurs. Yeah. And we've been talking a lot about how I'm going to uh, get people's attention. How am I going to bring them in to like get them to join my community? I, I've started a Facebook community. I've got you know in person meetups here in St. Petersburg, um, but. I also want to start getting more eyes on our online resources, and you mentioned that Twitter is definitely the way to go over other platforms. So, why, like, what are some some ways that Twitter is making my content? Like, if I'm spending the time to put content on Twitter, mm -hmm. and how is it how is it going to get out to more eyes on Twitter versus the other platforms? Well, here's the first thing that I like about Twitter: Twitter's thought content, right? Uh, Instagram is video content. You need to have cool videos, snazzy right. videos, you know, uh, um, uh, subtitles and all this editing and all, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's designed to be video based. Okay. okay. Um, Facebook, it's, I mean, the Facebook groups and the Facebook communities are still good, but Facebook for what it is, it's, it's, it's not, and, and ads, there are a lot of good things about Facebook, although I don't really like ads, but it works on Facebook. Right. Um, but Twitter's thought content, and if you're if you're trying to sell thought content, meaning helping others help others, right? So it doesn't sound like you want to be the one to actually help the people. Where as a personal trainer, you're not trying to be on Twitter to teach people bicep curls, whatever. You want to teach them perhaps why bicep curls are important, right? Or how it brings value to their life. Um, You'd be on Instagram to show them the demonstrations. Gotcha. You'd be on Twitter to get them to adopt a mindset that you're trying to promote, right? Because you use words and people read words. And Instagram is, is for watchers yeah. and TikTok is for watchers. X is for readers. So if I like to write. If you like to write, Twitter. X is the spot. X. Yeah, X is a X mark. X spot. Oh. Elon, you could take that if you want. Man, maybe I mean X is a spot. Yeah, because it's 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 for for the way that you want to produce content. And if you want to produce content through the written word, and then it's the consumption of the content. People are on X, they're on Twitter, so because they they're reading the information. So you're dealing with a different type of person who's consuming the written word versus someone who's doom scrolling their videos. Right. So that's just one of the many reasons. And then and then with regards to um, what was your second part of your question? Like, uh, oh, oh, so so that's if you're that's if you're trying to teach the person how to do bicep curls, like the how to version wouldn't necessarily be the the the, the content for Twitter for X. But what you're trying to do, what it sounds like helping others help others is you're trying to talk to the trainers to teach the trainers more about their business yeah. or about how they can work better with their clients. Cause you have well over 10 years, 12, 15, stop me when I would get there. I think 2006. Well, so yeah. almost 17 years experience in this industry, right? So there's a lot of people with less than 17 years experience that you can provide value to. So that's what X would be for. You'd be talking to those people. Okay. You'd be telling them how, you know, XYZ works and why mindset this and and whatever it is that that you're teaching them how to become better trainers that's what that's what you're going to use X for and that's who you're going to talk to that's your audience yes you can still you can still have the other content with regards to how to do bicep curls or whatever but you, you can filter out whether or not you need that and if it's going to be valuable to what you're trying to actually grow Okay. All right. So um, that's an a overview of why we're going to start um, utilizing Twitter or why I'm going to start utilizing it. Uh, and I have uh, this morning I went back and kind of updated some of my uh, my elements on my profile. Um, I changed. I had used Twitter for some other some other promotional things in the past and it had some old stuff on there, some old cryptocurrency stuff. So. We're gonna see less crypto and more uh, 
fitness and wellness entrepreneur stuff. Um, so yeah. I changed. The first thing you did was you had your. Um, so let me show, let me just out. You want to just run through it real quick? Sure. All right. So on the on the desktop, this looks awesome, right? But if you look on the mobile, your banner, I can't read your banner. You can't. You look at the, look at the oh, because it right Be, out because the of the the camera and all that well, stuff you got on a the top. Big ass camera block. This out is of just it. a regular iPhone. This is oh, what oh iPhone. Right? That's the problem. But look at mine. See mine. Mine is placed right underneath the camera. Okay. You see, so when you're designing your banner. You have to make sure that you're doing it with mobile in mind. Because even if it's 50% okay. of the people who are reading on mobile, slide that down. yeah, you got to slide it down and you and you test it on so mobile. So basically what he's saying on the, the mobile version is the, the broken trainer, uh, a part of my profile the banner. Uh, banner, is blocked out. So I'm going to move that whole thing down uh, and then to the right so that whole strip on the top will be, uh, right. will be uh, not blocked by anything. And then, so you launched or relaunched again this morning with Best Day, at Best Day Fitness, which is your brand, which is your company's, company's brand. brand. Now, branding, right? We talked about this the other day, branding company versus branding individual. Yeah. You know, what are you trying to build? And on X, more often than not, the success is gonna come from the personal brand. Right. So you wanna build Chris's brand. You don't wanna build Best Day Fitness. Right. Best Day Fitness is an extension of your brand but then so could many other things come from, right. right? Like if you're talking about an online platform, if you're talking about uh, writing a book, we, you know, whatever it is, you don't wanna feel limited in the way that you would have to name everything that you have called best day something right. or other, right? So, so if Elon it's Elon Musk, for example, people are following him, not, I'm sure they're following Tesla and SpaceX right. also, but if you want what Elon's talking about, you go to Elon. Yeah, because let's, let's look it up real quick. So if you go to, um, if you search Tesla, so we'll get to Tesla's store. homepage. Tesla. Okay. So Tesla has 20.9 million followers. 20.9, so 21 million followers. And if you hit Elon Musk's page, 157 million followers. <laughs> wow, let's, put, let's throw that up there. Elon you know, Musk, 157 million. million. So, as an example, there are some brands that are bigger than the CEO. Yeah. Of course, there's right. tons. We talk about this a lot in here when we say, you know, at what stage of the business are you doing this or doing that? So, yeah, you want to build your business, but on a profile like this, and, and even, you know what, even in a, even in Instagram, Facebook and stuff right now, TikTok, what people want is the person. Yeah. They want to know from you. They don't want to know what Best Day Fitness has to say about training regimens. Right. They want to know what Chris, who has 17 years experience in this business, has been through. The good things that happen, the shitty things that happen, that's what they want to know. So, you know, it, it became clear to me very quickly that at Best Day Fitness was not going to be your best bet. So as I'm scrolling through your, your profile real quick, I see this, uh, this banner that said the, the Broken Trainer Fitness and Wellness and then brokentrainer.com, and I'm like, oh shit, like, that's phenomenal. That, not the broken part, but the branding part right. of the broken trainer yeah, is, inc is incredible. I so that quite a while ago, so. One, uh, you gotta tell me what it is, but even without what it is, and this is why, this is why you need community, right? This is why you need friends, this is why you need a network, because I don't even know what broken trainer is, but I'm I'm bought into that idea. I'm already bought into it. I'm like that sounds like somebody that I need to listen to. Something's going on with this guy. So right away you've got me hooked. And and when I say why you need the community is because I, that's I'm here to tell you that. Like get rid of that best day thing, buddy, because you know on it's your a, ex profile. It's its own thing. Yeah. It's its own thing. Because this guy who's looking at me now as the broken trainer, that guy has some shit to say, <laughs> and I'm gonna listen to him, and that's what's gonna that's what's gonna get you engagement gotcha. and, and followers. So he could be Chris Tolisano, no problem at Chris Tolisano, and we could or whatever, and and that would do no harm, right? But if you do have something like like mine is my my name, it's at the Brian Orr, um, but 
something like this, once I saw that you were already doing that, I'm like, holy shit, we gotta roll with this. Let's do it with this. So so tell me what the broken trainer is. But even though point is is that it doesn't matter what the broken trainer is, I still already want to listen to him. And even the idea that I'm asking you that is what's gonna happen when people start to see this profile. Cool. Yeah, um, well, because of my my goals of growing a business and starting a business in 2010 and now it's 2023 and I'm still not where I wanna be with my business because looking back, I was trying to figure it all out myself, trying to just piece it together as I went and pretty much just somehow because of my customer service skills and getting referrals and treating all my customers, you know, as, as, with, as the best I could and give them all of, all of me, it allowed my business to somehow stay, stay afloat for all these years. So the business was broken, but I was, I was yeah, still managing to keep it, keep it going. So um, that's one part of it is I don't know how to run a business. I'm learning that as I go. I'm getting better at it. Um, I've you know, learned surrounding myself with lots of people um, to help me um, is part of that process. Um, and then just all the injuries. The other side is the actual physiological. <laughs> Physically broken, yeah. yeah like concussions. <laughs> I'm and, in on, I'm in on yeah. that one. Yeah, so just you know, beating up my body for years and years and understanding what pain is and acute pain and chronic pain and how to manage it and deal with it and heal from it and help others to, 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 to do the same and through my own personal experience. It's a lot more relatable when somebody comes in with a shoulder injury when I spent time on the, you know, on the surgery table having mm -hmm. shoulder surgery, I get it. Um, so it's kind of twofold. Um, I'm, I'm aware that I was broken and I am broken and I'm learning how to fix all those things, whether it's my body or my business, and I'm just bringing it together as Broken Trainer. Um, I've actually, that was the title of the book that I started writing a few years ago and I've got probably about 80 pages written, kind of about my story and why, why I came to call myself Broken Trainer. Um, so that's, that's the, the premise behind it. And now that I've pivoted my business model into helping others to help others and you know with the, with the physical space, of the rental space for all the trainers and therapists, um, I'm giving people a home to not become broken like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so I love it. I wanna teach people like what I've learned um, firsthand. So that is, uh, and then the, the mastermind community, again, a, a support group, a, a collective intelligence, if you will, of smart you, people around me. To, are you uh, calling it that? The um, What are you calling the, the, the meetup? The Fitness and Wellness Entrepreneur Mastermind Community. I know it's a lot. Or FWEM. <laughs> Fresh more. Wow. You, you, uh, I, I'm. I, I love this idea of the broken trainer, and I really want you to like fucking gobble that thing up and just go all in on this. So I think that'll be like how I can grow my global like non geographical audience. I think it'll it'll definitely it, it, just your. Heads. But but don't yeah don't even think about it that way. Just. Just you, like you grow your, like your audience, right? Your, the awareness of you and the things you've been through and the things you have to say are completely embodied by that name. It's such a great name. So like, all right, so let's look at your bio. Um, so I'm going to profile. Because uh, what do you want me to bring up on mine? I'm on your Twitter bio. Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Um, all right, so. Helping others to help others avoid the pitfalls of business ownership with collaborations, community support, and tools for success. All right, so now I'm no Twitter master guru, right? I'm still learning. My quick Twitter story: I was on in early 2009 um, for my, you know as my as DJ Twist, and I was doing my DJ stuff for many many years on Twitter. Um, I had thousands and thousands of people on my Twitter, and like just stopped using it because. I didn't like what was happening to it. And this is like, you know, eight years ago or something. Um, I only used it for a brief amount of time. And then, I don't know, maybe every once in a while I would pop on and say, hey, if I type something, is anybody going to respond to it? Whatever. So as I decided, I guess it was just over these past six months or so to, to make a pivot um, on the business side and do more personal branding that wasn't DJ related and more business related with my real name, 
um, I jumped back on Twitter and I started working it for the past six months or so. And I'm still learning a lot as I go day by day, as things are changing um, with you know algorithms and so on and so forth. But just as, just in general, and the way that you can like gain value from from this platform. So I'm no super duper expert, but I have an idea from what I've been doing. A lot of the mistakes that I've made, I've had my profile rewritten by like pros a couple different times because I'm constantly still trying to figure out where my voice is, where my message is. So I'll just give you that for whatever it's worth and you take it for so let's go, let's, let's whatever check out, you feel let's check like. Let's out your profile real quick. Okay. Just so we can just so you can talk a little bit more about some of the things you've worked on and Yeah. And that way we can kind of compare okay, where you where you've gotten so far and mm -hmm. what I need to work on. Yeah, so I dropped I I went through and started I did it manually I probably could have there's probably an app or talk to Marcus there's an AI for it I don't know but there you know I got rid of like 4000 or something followers because they were people that were on in 2009 and they just never came back or whatever so I I brought myself all the way down to like when you 50, say got rid of how you can you like, can remove followers oh so if you're trying if you were like it's sort of like cleaning your list, like cleaning your email list. You know, if no, if you have an email list and nobody's open, they haven't opened that email in four and a half months. You know, take them off your list because it's it's so a waste. So I imagine if you had a bunch of followers for your DJ stuff and and you weren't posting anything on that anymore um, for that brand, mm -hmm. um, that could potentially. Uh, limit your exposure be, uh, with, yeah with so a there's twofold with a different exactly. audience yeah there's twofold there so one if you just if you just that, that that's one of the challenges with building the business brand right because DJ twist was a was a, a a personal brand but as an entertainer so like when I was only when I was talking about music and and DJing and traveling and everything was performing and all of that you know I built that that's great but then that ended right. so all those people are not really interested in me. They're interested in the things that were happening in the DJ world. Right. So that's what happened when you put the the business brand before the personal brand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, whereas if you build a personal, like as Brian now, I mean, yeah, we can talk more about how you want to niche or not niche or whatever. But no matter what, as me, whatever I'm doing is still me. So if I'm talking about branding this week and I'm talking about homeschooling next week and I'm talking about you know sports or, or recovery from my from my treatments you know whatever it is I'm talking about is, is me so people who are tuned in yes you're, you're, you're you would when you're talking about sales and marketing you want to you want to be like one guy you want to be talking about one thing gotcha. you don't want to pretend to be the expert in 80 different things but if you're talking about your skills your passions your family you know that kind of thing people are are resonating with that because that's what social community is that's what social networking really is and they want to know the person so as the person i can make these pivots i can make these adjustments and you're more than likely going to retain people who are more interested in in me my voice my humor my sarcasm my intellect my idiocy whatever it is that they that they like about me are going to stay you know more in tune as the personal brand as opposed to the business brand gotcha. so yeah so what i did was for two reasons one because i didn't necessarily remove people who i thought wouldn't like stuff but i was removing people who just had not been engaged even with twitter you can go on and just look at, at their last tweet gotcha. if their last tweet was from 2011 yeah they're serving <laughs> me no purpose right. and for whatever it's worth the algorithm has points in there one way or the other versus your uh for your um for your uh engagement percentage so if you have eleven thousand followers and nobody ever likes any of your stuff that's not good the algorithm's going to be like something's not right about this all right so clean your list yeah good. but if you have a hundred followers and and you get 88 likes on everything you're gonna be you're gonna be boosted to the top of everything that's that sounds important right and now that's how you're going to grow. Okay. You're going to grow that way because now in your for you page and all that sort of stuff, they're going to Twitter's going to be like whatever this guy's talking about, the people that are following him like him. Yeah. Maybe not at 100, but you know what I mean. Right. You, you, the idea is you want to have the 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 best engagement rate possible. Now, some people say that's part of the code, some people say it's not part of the code. It makes sense to me logically that it is part of the code. So, 
you know, that seems like an easy thing for them to plug in yeah. <laughs> relative to all the complexities of AI code. I mean, of, of, of um, software code. So anyway, so yeah, so, so I dropped down to like 1500 over the past few months. I'm at 1857 now with regards to followers. Um, there's so many things we can dive into with X with like lists and, you know, what, how to gain followers and all of this other stuff. But just, yeah, quickly with my profile. So the strategy session is my newsletter. I talk about business strategies. Um, I include a couple of other things on there because I do like it to be sort of personal. So I, I do. You, you said newsletter. Where, where? In the banner. Oh, okay. The strategy session newsletter. Oh, yeah. right, right up front. Right there. Um, right, you skipped right past it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and the website, my website is onehappyclient.com because it's it's based on uh, a referral marketing strategies, things that I teach with regards to branding and and um, and marketing. Now, my bio. Sorry, I'm going to your your one happy client, and that goes to thebrianor.com. Yep. Cool. All right. And. Um, yeah, so my bio I play with all the time. Okay. I play with my bio all the time. And it's really just because I'm Does trying to figure out. <laughs> I'm really just trying. I mean, she she was pregnant for a long time. <laughs> and now, you know, now after the baby, it is what it is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I right now, the way it, it reads, grew my international DJ brand with inbound and relationship strategy, homeschool dad, helping entrepreneurs discover the power of one happy client. Um, I have my category listed as a business consultant and then you can use tricks. There's tricks to like use your location and um, other things to, to add more text that, that you would want to text. So for my location, it says join over 3,500 subscribers and it points to then the link, gotcha. right? So you can, you can finagle things a couple of different ways um, to try to maximize your, your profile because this is your business card. So when you post something, if it does end up getting pushed on someone's page, they've never heard of you, or you're commenting on someone else's page, the first thing they're gonna do is click on you. They're gonna see this, and this is your online business card. So okay. this is what they're gonna look at. They're gonna see, oh, this guy runs a newsletter, uh, onehappyclient.com, so he's got a website, and it has something to do with managing clients. Now, why am I listening to him? Oh, so he grew his, his, his DJ brand internationally, so that sounds good. Uh, with inbound and relationship strategy. So again, I'm talking about marketing. I'm talking about relationships, right? I'm talking about inbound. So some people understand that, some people don't. But they'll keep reading, homeschool dad. Oh, okay, so, because maybe I commented on on a page that had nothing to do with DJing or marketing or whatever. I might've commented on a, on a, on a dad thing. You know, my, my biggest post yesterday was about um, how to, what to do with taking your kids to, to a professional, to a football game. So I, I do dad posts too. So people say, oh, homeschool dad. So that's two things, right? It's like he's, he's educating his kids at home and he has kids, like, right? Um, and now how is he going to help me? Like what, what, what am I going to follow him for if not these two? If I don't like the fact that he built an international DJ brand, if I don't like the fact that he homeschools his kids, um, let me give him one more shot. And he helps entrepreneurs discover the power of one happy client. So there it is, that one happy client again. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> and here you go again with the location. It says, it mentions the newsletter, join over 3,500 subs, and it points again to onehappyclient.com, which you can click. So what I've, what I've done here is tried my best to talk about, you know, three things, more or less. So I, my dad life. Um, with a, with a subcategory of homeschool to kind of give a perspective of, you know, the type of dad that I try to be. Um, helping entrepreneurs, so I'm, do, I'm a business to business, right? So I work with entrepreneurs, so that's what I do. And I have something to do with branding, relationship, strategy, inbound, marketing, something to that effect. So that's, that's kind of what this whole bio is meant to tell you in the second and a half that you might read it. Cool, makes sense. You're not just a one, you know, one trick pony, you got a couple of different things and those are all things you're willing to talk about and wanna uh, help others with, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and that's kind of the gist. You wanna, 
you don't want to be on on this platform just shit posting about whatever all right. the time because it, yeah you might get a couple likes and a couple things but you know it's chances are if you're tr if you're on here and you're on here for business and you're not just on here to spam and and be a, a you know a, a troll or whatever you can actually leverage it and do it in the right way. So you got to think of your profile as building your business card. And you got to think of all your comments and, and the things that you're posting, you know, as your brand messaging. You're building a brand with the things that you're saying, the people you're engaging with, and the comments that you're making on other people's pages. So probably don't want to be too inflammatory in, other, in your comments uh, unless you're trying to be. Exactly. <laughs> if, it's, if it's intentional, yeah. you know. You can be inflammatory in some things. Um, you know, because people also want to know that you stand for something. Right. Right? What is that? It's my it's vibrating phone. Are you playing with your bio again? <laughs> um, you know, people want to know that you stand for something. So whatever that is, right? Like, as the broken trainer, for example, you can, do you want to stop? Do you want to get that thing? Is it going to, how long is it going to buzz? Hopefully not too much longer. All right. Hang up. He's not answering. <laughs> All right. So like as the broken trainer, for example, you might have a stance that is completely against uh, this particular type of training. So let's say you were, let's say CrossFit. Okay. It's a massive movement all over the world. And a lot of people who are in it, love it like a religion, and then there's a lot of people who don't like it. Um, those, are the, those are the physical therapists that are rehabbing all the people doing CrossFit. There you go. <laughs> so, so, or maybe I, they do, maybe I, they I do like it. I wrong CrossFit, by the way. Maybe physical, maybe personal <laughs> trainers or physical therapists do like it because it's keeping them busy. It's keeping them busy, yeah. Um, but let's just use this as an example. So you might be somebody who got hurt in CrossFit and then have decided to dedicate yourself to teaching people that there's better ways to train than these group classes, okay? So your moniker, your, your, the broken trainer who got injured and now you're teaching a better way, right? So like your stance would be anti-CrossFit. So anyone who posts cro CrossFit, you know, not attacking them personally, but attacking the, the, the philosophies of this, the, the strategies of CrossFit, or whatever, the, the types of training, I don't know enough about training, but you know what I mean? So like, so you can be polarizing because, and you can be inflammatory because people wanna know that you stand for something. Gotcha. So sense. if you're on, let's say, a CrossFit community page, you know, you, listen, the people's profiles grow with enemies probably more than they do with, with friends, right? That's not to say that that should be your main strategy, but it, it doesn't hurt to, to show that you stand for something because it solidifies the strength with your friends, the people who say, yeah, you know what, Chris has been you know, the, 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 the outspoken proponent of proper training and, you know, and we, we support him. You know, and then there's the CrossFit people who are like, F this guy. <laughs> you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, he's broken. You know why? Because he's... Because he hasn't done CrossFit. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> CrossFit would heal him. And, uh, but whatever it is, what is that? That's engagement. It's publicity. That's, that's marketing. That's publicity. That's community for and against. Yeah. And, and you can grow by standing for something. If you don't stand for anything... It's like having a, it's like having a debate. Like, during the debate, you're going... Arguing on either sides after the bait, your friends, yeah, it could be completely afterwards. fine. You don't have to be enemies with people right. who do CrossFit, for example. But your the idea is that if you're selling another way, or you're, even if you're not selling, if you're just engaging and trying to promote uh, another way of life, a training that's opposite of, let's say, CrossFit, then then the way that you're going to grow that is by showing people that that's what you stand for. And you're gonna have people that support it. And there's gonna be CrossFit people that are gonna be your customers too because they're gonna to wanna to know what this guy thinks he's talking about. So they're also gonna buy your book. They're also gonna watch your videos. They're also gonna engage on your posts or at least be watching, right? Because they wanna know what, you know, maybe there's some people that are so CrossFit that are gonna be try to try to you know go against you with everything you say. Maybe there's some people who just kind of 
are like choosing CrossFit, but they're like, oh, I mean, because it feels good, but maybe they don't. Like, it feels like it's what they're supposed to do. And they're trying to learn other things, from it, right? And then maybe there's a trainer who's coming out of school or whatever who's like, you know what? I can either be a CrossFit trainer or I can work at this like high end, you know, thera therapeutic type of, you know, treating, treating trauma, treating this and treating that. I want to learn from this guy and I want to learn, you know what I mean? So, so it, it is very important that you do stand for something. And if it ruffles a few feathers, it's not, it's not such a terrible thing. Cool. So just be yourself. Exactly. That's the whole point. Just be yourself. Um, I like it. All right. So, so your bio. And I have nothing against CrossFit. Right there, <laughs> keep, Me neither. Keep CrossFit. It's just, it's just, just an example. Just mix it up a little bit. You know? Don't have to do one thing. You can do lots of things. Helping others to help others. All right, I just wrote all this stuff this morning, so yeah. So I let's think. so let's get on it. Helping others to help others avoid the pitfalls of being of business ownership with collaborations, community support, and tools for success. Okay, so here's what I'm seeing with this. Um, now, helping, that, now that you've told me how this is a business card, I can see that you make some changes. Yeah, we okay. make some big changes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I'll just give you then a quick fee a quick feedback. My first thing that when I see helping others to help others. Uh, you, I need more clarification with that because that's your first line. That's what people are going to see. You know, I would change that in some way for sure. Um, avoid the pitfalls of business ownership with collaborations, community support, and tools for success. So, so are, guess, that's guess, what you're helping them try to avoid yeah. the pitfalls. Yeah. Uh, but then you're saying with collaboration, support, and tools. So you're you're saying that you're providing the solution for them. And I just think it's too much. It's too much of a journey yeah. um, for, your, for your bio. So if I was gonna make any offering before you even make any changes, I would put in the amount of time that you've been training mm. and, and, um, and why you're broken, or at least- <laughs> Why I'm broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, like for sure. My, my, so my first thought is something to the effect of, you know, 17 years experience level why why they should listen to me yeah that well that's exactly what it is it's why they should listen to you right so so 17 years um so that's of, the why and then all right you can say like you you don't want to you don't want to self-deprecate right but something to the idea you can say like 17 years of you know um bad bad body parts like you know you broken broken body and broken businesses and you know i'm still standing <laughs> i'm still standing after all this time right if there was a th if it was my space bro you'd be able to drop that right in there and you'd have your your page song i miss my space by the way i wish i could log in um i, I got some pictures on there that i know i don't know else someone has them oh man um yeah, I wish I could log into. I wonder if there's a way. There's got to be a way. I don't know how. But yeah, so I would look at something to the you effect of. Probably need your AOL account. To, oh yeah, I don't even know. You, <laughs> you know. That might be under my college account too. For what it was, I don't even know. Speaking of AOL, we we're at our um, at our ESC meeting there at night. <laughs> we we're talking about how you should have like your business name as your email address instead of at Gmail. And then somebody is like, unless you have an AOL account, because if your AOL account is your business account. All right, your business email, that means you've been in business for a long time. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> that was funny. Sorry true, more. true. <laughs> All right, so uh, back to the... Yeah, so I would do something like 17 years of broken, broken body and broken business, right? Something to that effect. Um, you know, I'm still standing and here's... And, and whatever, and I don't know. And then something to the idea of how you're going to help people when they're... Right. Yeah. Because like that. that's your experience. You've been beaten down. You've been broke. That explains what the broken trainer is. And then, and then that gets me back to how am I going to help others to help others, which I don't have to say, but I can. That's my mission, so I can package that into the bio. Uh, right. Like so, sort of like one of my bios at one point was like twenty five years, and I spent twenty five years making mistakes, so you don't have to. Mm. Right. Like something to that. That was yeah. one of the things that I was playing with there too. Like so people are like, oh, that's interesting. So now he's going to talk about experience that he ha that he's had so long and if and if he can shorten my 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 learning curve you know shrink it down so i can get from a to z faster 
save me time in learning what he's learned telling me now that's why you read biographies that's why we you know that's why we have mentors it's all that kind of thing so people will will want to get your 17 years in two or three tweets a day yeah. if at all possible and then ultimately to your whatever you're selling so you know we we did first remember to define your audience right your audience is other personal trainers so you're talking to fitness twitter that's who, that's who you're going to be talking to. And then you're also going to be talking to people who have had struggles in their life mm -hmm. in one way, shape, or form. Because you're going to tell your story of triumph or, you know, how you've, even if you're not to the point where you're at now, you're still here, right? right? And you're still doing it. And you could have been stopped from doing it so many times. And you fought back each time, right? So, so those kinds of inspirational stories are going to speak to people who have setbacks mm -hmm. in you know one way shape or form in their life so that's a big audience um but you know so you'll be speaking to to them as well right so you're not just talking to other trainers right. and then you're going to the things that you're going to talk about well the, the one is is overcoming the setbacks and then the two is business stuff so Here's all the mistakes that I made in business. Here's all the good things I'm, I've done in business. Here's the things I'm trying to do in business. Here's what I'm doing right now. And this is what I'm doing right now. So right now I'm building this community and I'm, and I'm, and I'm expanding my network and I'm, and I'm like working with, with friends and guys that do different things and we're putting all our heads together. And you know, all of those things matter to somebody who's year one right. of whatever. Right. Where they, I was in my first year, like, what, yeah. what do I do? And they want to know that someone who's been training for 17 years still doesn't have all the answers. You don't have to be the guru. You don't have to have all the answers. You can have a lot of questions, but your questions are better than the questions of the first year guy. So if you're solving your problems, yeah. that's you're accelerating his, uh, his opportunity to solve his problem by more than a decade. And that's the thing that you're gonna talk about and that's why this is, you know, people are gonna tune into your, your page and, and be following your page. Absolutely. Cool. All right. So, uh, it's my business card. Yeah. That's a, that's a good synopsis for sure. I didn't even think of it like that as a business card, um, but it makes a lot of sense. If you're, if you're doing business on Twitter and, and on X, and right now, X is the place to do business. I mean, the organic traffic that you can get from here, it's incredible. I, you know, and there's strategies and there's lots and lots and lots of ways, you know, that you can, that you can generate. So I can show you. So yeah, um, let's get, so we've got, so we've talked about profile and now we talked about why Twitter is the place to be. And now the strategies. And yeah, what, and we, what, can, we can talk forever about strategies. So what are some basic things that you've done recently uh -huh. that have that you've noticed kind of an uptick in exposure in audience growth in just just all Yeah, the so I'll show you on my screen because it's my internal stuff and we can talk about it so it won't be recorded but um, we can talk about it. So you can see how on um, this this scrolls back to I mean I guess the analytics so you can see here, like like I can show, I'll show this at some point, but May 2022, June, July, like there's very little action. There's there's nothing really happening. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't do that. I was thinking I could do the, could do the remote yeah. camera and show. Well, I don't want to show my, I don't want to show all my gotcha. stats, but I'll show them at some point. Maybe I just want to make sure that nothing in here is private or whatever. You know what I mean? So you'll, so basically just you and I talking. There's a dozen new followers. This is month by month. Two new followers here, minus one. Um, two new followers. September, I started tweeting a little bit, right? So you can see where it was my first impression, September of 22. Before that, there's no impressions. I wasn't tweeting at all. Um, so this was just, so you went from two a month to 254 a month. This just is impressions. By... This is impressions, not followers. Right, but okay, impressions, but. You went from two impressions to 254 impressions? No, zero impressions. So there's no impressions here. Okay. You see, so August 22, I hadn't tweeted in the longest time. September, it looks like I tweeted something. And whatever I tweeted, people didn't like because I lost nine followers. <laughs> right? But then I tweeted again in October. You can see my impressions, 254 to 1,300. 
The next month, 38,000 impressions. Damn. Then December dropped to 5,000. The next month, 48,000 impressions. And six new followers. And six new followers. The next month, five, this is February. This is when I started. Like when I really said, I'm gonna get on Twitter. Um, 564,000, is that really him? You got the, the Tennessee head coach? Is that really him? No, that's not him. That's gotta be like a fake profile or something. Yeah, probably. Fake. He's followed by 25,000 people. That's gotta be fake, yeah. but we'll look at it. Um, he might have gotten unfollowed by 25,000 people after this weekend. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we can talk sports too. Is that right? Okay, so 564,000, 15 new followers. March, and I'll show you on the graph, and you'll see the difference between my engagement and my action. And all we're looking at here is impressions and followers. So this was me saying, oh, wow, my engagement's really low. I need to start taking some old followers off. So I went through and deleted a whole bunch, a couple hundred. Some new ones added on, and I netted that minus number, the minus 112. In April 2023. Oh, two million. Exactly. So I went from 564. Then in March, I started realizing I'm not doing something right. And I spent most of the time working on the profile. Then in April, I started tweeting, and I had 2 million impressions with 191 new followers. May, 2 million impressions, 28 new followers. And now this is net, because in the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm reducing them yeah. week to week. I didn't go in and just delete 1,000 at a time, right? So now we start looking towards June of this year, which is a couple months ago, and you'll see a couple of different analytics that they started to add in. So I have 300 tweets, 6,400 profile visits, 18 new followers. So th that, to me, was when I realized something's wrong with my profile mm. because I have 6,400 people going to my page, but only 18, 18 people are following ratio. me. So some, I'm not doing something right. Now, so some of these impressions and, vi and profile visits and stuff are bots and you know whatever right. is happening. There's, there's all this spam everywhere on all these social profiles. So, I wouldn't say that 6,420 people actually visited my page individually, but you can see that somehow or another my page was getting hit and I wasn't converting. Um, but again, 18 new followers is net, so I don't know exactly how many I added, how many I took away. We're just looking at the big picture. Um, 1.45 million impressions and 1,114 mentions. Now that's a big deal because that means that people are using my name in their tweets. Oh, wow. So that's a big deal, and that has to do with engagement and w working with bigger profiles, and, or I should say uh, con connect, not connecting, commenting on bigger profiles and how to get your engagement up. Um, so the next month, I tweeted 420 times, 8,000 visits, 44 net new followers, 2.4 million impressions, and 700 mentions. Damn. So now I go to August, that was July, I go to August and I was not tweeting very much in August. I had 1.6 million impressions and I had a net of negative 78 followers, which is again, I, you know, I'm taking away 100 every week, right? Something like that. Um, and now we go to September, which for whatever reason, it says I haven't tweeted this month yet. So maybe, maybe these stats are not fully up. Um, let me try Maybe to. Maybe I wait till the end of the month. Oh, we're working on improvements. Elon's firing people right now. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So it, it's um. Yeah. See, so it has engagement right here in their statistics, right? So like, this tweet had fifty-two impressions, ten engagements. How do you get to the analytics part? Uh, you go to more profile, yeah, more, and then professional tools. Oh, Maybe you might. Because I'm not verified. Yeah, you might need to have the. I need to be verified. Verification. So what? Um, well, yeah, like the the first tweet I tweeted this two hours ago. It has three thousand impressions, one hundred and sixteen engagements. And then I tweeted the, this one right after that, and it's 52 impressions, 10 engagements. It's fucking crazy. So, you know, this is all algorithm stuff. I don't know how to do any of this shit. I don't know what this stuff does. But I do know that you your gotta be active. is not eligible for premium at this time. You changed your profile photo within the last three days. Oh. 
So, so I wait three days before I can do that? What I would do, yeah, so make sure that you have your photo and your name exactly the way you want it. You can change your bio, you can change your banner, but you can't change your photo or your name. So once you do that, then you gotta reapply for the verification. So I'll wait or, three, well, once three days yeah. go by, then I'll do it in three days. All right, cool. Yeah, so this shows I have a million impressions over the last few weeks. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I'm still standing. It's like my, one of my favorite Elton John songs. It's so fun. It's just like, I'm doing it. I'm still here. The Broken Trainer. Oh yeah, so let's do your bio. All right, um, well, I'll just keep it like that for now. The broken trainer. You gotta lower it, it's too high. Too high still? Yeah. So what's sub, sub headlines? Mm, creative processes. Trainer. I'm still standing. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I'm still standing. Do, 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 do. Like, that's pretty. Do it in a different color. Yeah, I'm just writing it down. I'm gonna work you through this real quick to help with your bio. And I will show you. <laughs> oh, I'm, do I need an apostrophe for I'm? Uh, yeah, because otherwise it just says M, M still standing. M still right. standing. Recording my Twitter foundation in the making. All right. Yeah. So then let's 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 knock out your positioning real quick, which is essentially your bio. Yeah. Oh wait, 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 wait. Back up for a minute, because I want to video that. Show me the first, yeah, go back out of that. All right, so here's the banner, which we realize doesn't show well on mobile. So we created a new banner. Let's go in and change that. Boom. That looks, that looks sexy. Ooh. There we go. Should I make it bigger? It's closer to my head? Oh, I bet it'll look better when it's. Let's solid. check this guy out at the broken trainer. Save. Let's, let's see what that looks like. I'll show you what it looks like on here. Ooh, I like that. Okay. So, as you can see, it looks super dope, but the challenge is. To get it outside of those. Yeah. So I need to bring it. Just I, well, if I just bring it over towards. Let, let me to take mind. a look at someone else, like at some of the ma the bigger guys. I just want to see if theirs is. Yeah. So I mean, see, his is it's blocked. His is really good. He's really popular. Um, so his you can't see, but let me let me go to like some of the top 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 guys. Yeah, you can see 
nice, simple, easy. In the center. In the center. I um, if I just move it over. You can probably just move it to the center. As long, I think as long as it's no like right. See, like, these are, these, and this is the difference, because these are all web guys, right? So people, and, and these are guys that I feel like work from their desk. So they're building it desktop way. Gotcha. Um, you see how it's all behind the thing? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, having it in full size is not terrible, but you can see sometimes the simplicity. Yeah. Um, centered, right, is an option. Centered. I look at mine on the but different format or different. Let's phone. see your phone, yeah. That's true because. <laughs> ah, see that? That looks good. So there you go. Because on yours, that looks awesome. Should it go bigger, maybe? No. No, it looks great. Okay. Let, let me see this for a second because I want to look at some of the others that I know. I mean, that's, a, that's a larger format um, phone, too, because it's like the really big Samsung. So some of the other Samsungs are a little more compressed, probably more like the size of an iPhone. But the, the Galaxy Pluses are like this is like screen. Yeah, this is crazy. I feel like I'm going to break this phone. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that looks good. I'm just clicking on some of the guys that I'm following. It's actually sucking like your life force out of you while you're using it. I feel I'm getting a headache a little bit. Yeah, I go home and I just upload it all to. I just it's uh, we call it um, osmosis. I just get smarter by letting people hold my phone. I go home and put it up to my brain. Oh yeah, see, I wonder. So that's wild. So just so you guys know, on the iPhones, the uh, the banner is very very different. And I was excited about building mine to show on the iPhone. But just so you know, the iPhone is the smallest one. So if you build it on the iPhone, it'll show everywhere else. But see, like his is fully built on like as a banner. He's expecting people to see that on the desktop. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like an entire advertisement. Cool as fuck, too. Uh, shout out to Chris Doe. All right, I'm going to work on my, uh, my bio here. Yeah, so with the bio, I mean, we're looking at the 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 positioning, right? So, I help this kind of people, right? Do I need to maybe see why why people should listen to me before I tell them what I do? Well, it all has to be condensed big time. So when, and I'm not necessarily saying in the order. So we've, we've already landed on why they should listen to you, right? You're 17 years plus, whatever. So then now we're talking about what, what, are you, what are you gonna do for them? So I help this person to do what? Buy what? So that what? <clears throat> right? Samsung's experience in the fitness and rehab industry. You're already running out of letters. Yep. That's what I mean. <laughs> I know. Um, If I was gonna write this, just write it like this and then let's change it, all right? So write, write 17 years of broken body and broken business. Broken body and broken business? Yeah. Um, and then well, the business isn't broken for 17 years, but my body's been broken for a lot longer than that. <laughs> yeah, but what are you going to talk about? What do you want to do here? Are you going to sell people on getting their shoulders better, or are you going to sell people on helping others? Helping others. And that's business. Yeah. So you are a B2B, so you got to talk about business. Yeah. So you can't say, I'm, I'm a broken trainer, but I've, ha I've had the greatest business for 17 years, right? right. 
you, th that's what I mean. You're not necessarily self-deprecating, but you're you're providing some reality. Like I've been, I've made mistakes through the years. Like I still don't have the perfect business, even though my business is well, even though I've been doing it for 15 years, whatever. I'm still, it's still broken. I have not yet come to the, right, right. So that's what you're. That's what you're saying. So now, I help. Um, fitness trainers. Uh, is that your people? Who's your people? I mean, business owners in the fitness wellness space. So that could be therapists, that could be massage therapists, physical therapists, chiropractors. Okay, so so that the community is based solopreneurs in the. It's it's. So can you say I help wellness professionals? How's that? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so got covers. So I help. Wellness professionals, um, avoid avoid the mistakes that I have gotten so good at making. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm just spitballing yeah, here. So too. I help I help wellness professionals get better at serving their clients or get better at business, or get better at serving their clients, something like that. Get better at... And this might end up running too long. That's why like the pen and paper is usually a good idea, but yeah. let's, let, we'll keep it at. Get better... <clears throat> Help wellness professionals get better at... Because what are they doing? their purpose, or not? So what, okay, so let's go, let's, let's do it this way. Here's who you help, so, right? So okay, let's let's bring it back. I burnt myself out by by giving. So I had a purpose of helping to heal others. That was my purpose of yep. going into this. By doing that, I got burnt out because I my my business was broken. I I was filling up everybody else's cup and not spending time to fill up my own. Mm -hmm. For years and years and years, just being drained every day, bit by bit, to the point where I no longer could be happy serving my purpose anymore. And for years and years had to deal with, now I not I can't serve my purpose, I don't enjoy doing having a purpose, so do I need to change my purpose? And that has ultimately led to, yes, I do, but I still wanna help others, but I need to. Well, you're not changing your purpose, you're changing your path to your purpose. Yeah. I'm, because yeah. you're still, going to ultimately help people with the injuries and so on, but you're not hands-on. Right. What you're doing is creating a tribe of people who are going to be hands-on, and you're educating them on the things that you've learned so that you can do it to scale because you can help way more people by teaching a tribe than you can with so many hours in the day. Mm -hmm. right? So that's what you're doing here. You're trying to help wellness professionals to... So, you know, either either you're helping them live out their purpose of helping their clients, like, or you're helping them serve their clients by being better at whatever, right? The, what, what is the thing that you're trying to... I'm trying to get them to keep their cup full while, while filling others. It's kind of a the shortened from a, from a mental health standpoint or from a business standpoint because yes, it's because it's all one and the same because if because i tied because if you go into if your business is tied to your purpose your success in that business is ultimately going to either drain you mentally or fill you up and give you the or help you mentally um enough failure enough um negativity is ultimately going to drain so what if you said health. something using your words to the effect of, I help wellness professionals um, maintain a full cup of mental, of mental health, something to this effect, right? Maintain, maintain a full cup of mental health. Maintain their, their fitness of their mental health or their... Um, because a lot of times we think, you know, we need to train our bodies physically to get stronger. So you're training the trainers to maintain or to, to you're training them to maintain m mental, emotional type of stability, right? Type of self-care, right? Mm -hmm. 
or maybe it's something to the effect of like teaching teaching trainers that their needs are as as important as their clients needs or something to that effect like like put on your mask before you put on the mask of the person next to you mm -hmm. right because if your mask is not on you can't help the person right. next to you right I help bonus professionals continue to do what they love no it's just else? you just got to say you just got to say like You can even say something like bringing bringing mental health awareness or right bringing mental health or or uh yeah okay so so you what you're doing is your your providing mental health awareness mental health strategy but mental health tools promoting mental health awareness for to help those that help others wellness professionals no 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 not help wellness professionals so just just literally just like like just type this right now like promoting mental health To those who help others, just for right now, just let, just we'll get let's get that thought out of out of our heads, right? So, because what you're doing, so you're 17 years of broken body and broken business. Now you're promoting mental health to those who help others, mm. right? You understand that yeah. the, the thought process there. Now you can chop that up and do whatever, but you know, um, so promoting maybe is not the word. Maybe it's you know, maybe it's. Uh, encouraging because we all as business owners we need encouragement there's yeah there's a word somewhere in there right you're promoting mental health you're not promoting it you're um you're trying to to Only build awareness for the importance right promoting mental health to those who help others by bringing awareness to uh, mental health, those who help others. Promoting, okay, mental health to, or you can say something like this, like, like, like wellness, wellness professionals, or stressing the importance of mental health for wellness professionals. Or, right? Stressing, promoting, encouraging. Yeah, encouraging, encouraging. I think, because I don't like the word stress, it sounds too Yeah, it's, it's the opposite of what you're trying to do. Encouraging. Uh, mental health, encouraging mental health uh, strat uh, strategies, mental health uh, awareness. Yeah. You can just say awareness for now, because that's a that's a good buzzword. Like encouraging mental health awareness to those who help others. I would even just take that out and just straight up say for, to wellness professionals or for uh, wellness yeah. professionals. Encouraging mental health awareness for for health for healthcare professionals or wellness professionals or something like that. No, professionals could not could be somebody that works for somebody else. So I really want to focus on those that are running their own business because that's or not. Or maybe I get a wider audience. It could, yeah. I mean, that's semantics. Like I think said, it's like it could, it could relate to other people that that see my journey and like, wow, he did it. You know, I, I hate my corporate job, but I can do it too. So, yeah. So remember, you you're do, you you just have to say what you stand for, right? In your audience, you can't you can't describe right. the thousand people that are in your audience. You, what what you're really doing is trying to help wellness professionals, you know, stay stay sane and do and not get broken, like you did, yeah. right? So that's who you're helping. That's what you're doing. That's what you're talking about. That's your mission. That's your purpose. There's going to be a lot of other people who are going to jump on board that may or may not be 
right. mental professionals or, or uh, wellness professionals. It just makes sense to them too. But it makes sense to them too. So you can't say, and also for the paralegal, and you know the the, the well, your paralegal you can't you can't no stay yeah away, exactly stay away. right don't, don't and, worry and, and also for <laughs> you know the tech guy mm -hmm. and also for the the lady studying for her PhD and also for you know what I mean like you just this is who you are this is what you this is what seventeen years of broken body and and broken business which I love that um, encouraging mental health awareness for wellness professionals. And fucking, you can do the squat emoji if you want or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to add in the idea that it's like, and then, you know, but you're called trainer, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're saying that you were broken. And then in your bio, in your thing, I'm still standing. Like that tells everybody everything they need to know. It's like there's a resilience thing here. There's an inspirational thing here. Mm -hmm. This is something that I'm going to want to tune into. So yes, your business perhaps is going to be specifically geared towards. So you're growing your email list. You're growing. You're going to sell uh, a course. You're going to write a book. Whatever it is that you're going to do, th that is going to be niched down to trainers. Who you're going to speak about trainers, right? But you can't tell me that let's say like Grant Cardone's book 10x is ninety nine point five percent about real estate. That only real estate people. Are going to get any value out of that book there's still going to be a lot of people because it's just about massive growth right he did it through real estate and he's talking through real estate because that's what he knows and that's what he's done and that's where success is but you know people who are not in real estate can certainly get value out of that and will and will buy it cool. so so when you when you talk about who you're selling to that's what that's what that is that's that's what your that's your purpose your purpose is for those people but everyone else who comes across this is going to be intrigued by the story, yeah. and you've just established like a killer, killer story. Awesome. Uh, and then ended at that, or should I? I still yeah, no, I, I, I think that that's. I still got fifty words or letters, or as a character. Less is more, man. I, I, agree. I agree. You can. Can you change that right now? I tried. It won't let me though. Actually, I don't want to lose this. So. If I, and sometimes if I... Yeah, just hit save. And see what it looks like on the page. Boom. All right, so, yeah, because I, I was having this issue earlier when I, I would take this off. And then save. And then I keep it in this error. Something went wrong, but don't fret. It's not your fault. Mm. I kept getting that all day. So I maybe because I've changed the name. Maybe this morning, and it needs to wait a day or two before I change it again. I wish you would tell me that. Let's go. Let me see. Okay, you want to see what AI thinks about it? Did you throw that into ChatGPT to see? Uh... It says the phrase 17 years of broken body and broken business is impactful and immediately conveys the challenges faced. It gives a sense of time and experience, which can be seen as a testament to resilience. Like I said, fucking wow. I'm ChatGPT. You bro. are ChatGPT. Target audience. The bio specifically mentions wellness professionals, which narrows down the target audience. This is good if the intention is to cater specifically to this group, but it might exclude others who could benefit from the message. Mm. Like we said, that's what you're, that's the fear. The fear is, will I, am I excluding people? And it's like, maybe, but you're gonna gain more by the people you're including than you are lose by the people you're excluding, because so, I don't think you're ex excluding so that, anyone. That's, that's interesting you say that, because as all these health coach or business coaches and marketing people have always said, you got to niche down, you got to niche down, you got to niche down. But for Twitter, potentially, 
you need to maybe not niche quite as much? So I don't think that you need to niche as much as everyone says you do anyway, and especially if we're talking about personal brand, mm. right? Because your personal brand, like I said the other, you know, I said the other day, I said to you a little bit earlier, like, I can have Tesla, I can have SpaceX, I, it's yeah. different. It's and you can just have, you can have rugby. Right. Like, why would you, why would you, like, Tesla is not going to talk about going to play rugby tonight, but Elon Musk can very easily talk about going to play rugby tonight. Cool. And that's not going to alienate the world from Elon Musk because he's talking about rugby because that's what he's doing, right? And, and, and Tesla, you don't want to hear about Tesla making mistakes. You just kind of don't. <laughs> you just don't, right? No. Like, no. You don't. But if Elon Musk says, we, there was an error in the code and we fixed something and da 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 da, you're like, whoa, that's great. He's giving me insight into yeah. what he's doing he's in his a daily human business. Yeah. And I'm looking behind the scenes at what he's doing, in, mm -hmm. right? So you can, Chris can say, you know, man, we're going through this thing and I'm trying to figure out what happened and revenue dipped this month or profits are up 14% this month, and whatever, right? But, but right now as your business stands, Best Day Fitness, Best Day Fitness doesn't want to say we're having a down month. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just gives a wrong, so you, so you can't be as real mm. as a business as you can personal and that's why people like personal because everyone knows that everyone has up months and down months but you still don't want that facade to be kind of broken through from the business side, but from the personal side, you know, people want to peek through the window and, and it's way easy to say, I'm going to play rugby or I'm going to, 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 to do whatever. I had a good day, I had a bad day. Here's what I'm doing with my kids. Here's what so while you don't want to necessarily be all over the place, like what I wouldn't do, what I wouldn't do is say, uh, I'm selling my personal training service. And by the way, I'm also selling a um, I, I, I do photography and I'm selling prints. And by the way, I also am a, uh, um, a wedding DJ. And if you want to book me for that, then talk, right? Like I wouldn't do those kinds of things because you, you don't want to be selling so many different things because then people have no idea yeah. what to come for you for. You want to end up being the guy of the thing or the girl of the thing, right? Whatever the thing is. So that could potentially be the niche component of it. Gotcha. But when you're a personal brand in this way, there's no one else in the world who's done the things that you've done, experienced them in the way that you have, had the mistakes you've had, had the opportunities you had, the blessings that you've had, the failures that you've had. So you are a niche. You already are. Cool. You see what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So yeah, you gotta you gotta separate. This is this is not best day fitness. This is my which is its own thing that does its own thing. This is Christopher Talisano that does Best Day Fitness. It's one of his things. Mm -hmm. And then I do photography, play rugby, do all these other things. I failed at all this stuff. I want to teach you about it. And that's yeah. and I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna fail again. I'm gonna And know. and there's there you'll learn on here and you'll get some gauge as like I don't know the exact I'm still figuring it out, right? right. But but let's say as I try to put myself in a user state in almost everything that I do. What is, how is this gonna be looked at? What are people gonna consider when, when they see what I'm putting out there? And like if, for example, I talk about buying small businesses today, and then later in the afternoon I talk about buying real estate, and then later in the afternoon I talk about buying old cars. Well, am I a, am I a small business owner? Uh, am I a, a real estate investor or am I a, a classic car connoisseur, right? That gets confusing. But if I say I'm an investor of things and I like to buy assets mm. and I diversify my portfolio by buying different kinds of assets, now all of a sudden there's my niche, right? My one thing, yeah. but I can do it across the board. I can talk about buying bonds. I can talk about buying, you know, whatever it is. I can talk about real estate. I can talk about cars. I can talk about businesses. I can talk about art. I can talk about all these things. As long as it's framed from the idea that I'm an investor in a lot of things, that's my niche. But if you, you know, so there's, there's a nuance to it to some extent. Well, so if I'm encouraging mental health awareness for wellness professionals, I know those wellness professionals 
have other hobbies and other things they like to do besides running their business, and that all promotes their mental health. So if I'm going, if I'm going to go play rugby tonight, I know that's good for me. It makes social interaction. There you go. There you see so exactly right. Kind of feeds into it, that's improving my mental health, so I can come in tomorrow and work on best day shit and be in a better place. Exactly so that I right. Can help others. Help others. Better. Exactly right. You can you can knock the shit out of somebody who's trying to take the, the corner, <laughs> right? Who's trying to go around the edge. You get them. You get you put a hit on them. That makes you feel better, mm -hmm. right? You get you get that out, right? You get to run and all the endorphins and everything that comes out of that, right? You get to hit. You get camaraderie, right, with your teammates. You get challenges with people who are opposing you, but in a sportsmanship kind of way. So you can talk about rugby all the time as long as you're talking about from the lens of mental health, mm -hmm. because then that stays in your in your niche, right? Yeah. You can talk about photography because sometimes it's not about being aggressive and violent and speed and whatever. Sometimes it's about staring at a tree for 40 minutes until I can get the right picture of that bird, right? And then you can talk about, <laughs> then you can talk about patience. And you can talk about, you know, sit, being with yourself in silence. And you can talk about how all of those things lay into, you know, helping you mentally. And then anything else that you, your skills, you know, your business, how you can, all of that, and, and why the business can be stressful and what's hard about it. And then, you know, when you have your successes, what's good about it, what you've learned through the years, and all of that under the mental health. So now you're, you know, the broken trainer the wellness professional mental health guy and all the things that that that, that entails hmm. and now you're not deviating so crazy so your niche yeah. to some extent but you're still able to talk about all the things that you love cool it allows my ADD to flourish no oh, oh, butterfly yeah i can still i can you... still chase those things and not suppress that like need to do that cuz that it is something I think the people that have are creative, we have all these ideas, and a lot of times, I think I posted this last week, is you've got to focus on your primary objective and put those to the side. But at the same time, putting those to the side is like, but that makes me happy, is chasing those <laughs> things. Like, I, I, so that makes my mental health improve. Maybe it stresses me out because my it hurts primary- your execution, yeah, yeah exactly. In some way, you still need to, uh, on the fringe, kind of tap into that a little bit. I don't Let's tap into um, what the rest of GPT says about your thing. There's four okay. more points. So it says, uh, while it's essential to acknowledge past struggles, the bio could benefit from a more positive or forward-looking statement. Mm -hmm. This would give followers a sense of hope and inspiration. Ooh. Now, this is what we remarked on. You have, I'm still standing in the banner, which is exactly that. It nails it. So perhaps, that if you want it. to, you could put something like that in, in the bio because, like you, when when you read mine, you skipped right past the banner. Yeah, so maybe throw so it in there. potentially, let's get, let's see what else we say. We're just we're, we'll do feedback, but think about putting the positive spin in the bio. So at the end of the bad stuff, you put "I'm still standing," something to that effect, right? Um, mental health. The, the the mention of encouraging mental health awareness is commendable and timely. It is a crucial topic, especially in professions where physical health often overshadows mental well-being. That's exactly what you said. Um, brevity, the bio is concise, which is suitable for platforms like Twitter with character limits. Suggestion for improvement. Consider adding a statement about what he offers now or how he has transformed his challenges into strengths. This could provide a clear picture of, a, of his current position or services. So Maybe tie that in with I'm still standing. Yeah, we're talking about what you've... Um, what you've done to and or or what you're selling right so how you how you've conquered it or are working on conquering it or what you're selling so the good news is between the two of us we've nailed all of the things that that chat gpt agrees with and disagrees with we've already covered that yes. so that's good um so now let's just go back to what it was asking so 17 years broken money and broken business encouraging mental health awareness for wellness professionals and you could say something like i've i've been there something like that right and i'm still standing so something to that effect because what that's saying is you it I like the idea of I'm still standing, so that'll go in there somewhere. But but 
because we're talking about your journey. So 17 years. So it brings your mind back then and then to now. I'm still standing, right? But what it doesn't say is from then to then, what was the change? So maybe I'm still standing goes there. Before encouraging. No. Yeah, because you say 17 years of broken body and broken business, and I'm still standing. Right? And now you're encouraging mental health awareness for wellness professionals. Cool. All right, so something like that. No, I would leave it as one sentence. Comma? No, don't ever use commas. And I'm still standing? Yep. You can use commas, but if you follow Grammar Hippie, you'll know that commas are the enemy of copywriting. Really? Yeah. That's a, that's a hot, hot... Yeah, he's hot, big on it. A, well, who is it? Grammar Hippie. This guy, George. He's, <laughs> a, he's, a, he's a really big in the copywriting community. You have to capitalize the I and yeah. I? Because huh. you're talking about I, me. Oh. 17 years of broken body and broken business, and I'm still standing. Encouraging mental health awareness for wellness professionals. Yeah. Cool. Now, we may play with that second sentence eventually, but let's get some feedback it's first. It's a lot better than what it was. Now it's more focused on here's what I do, here's what I am, here's who I am, why, why I am, why I'm Perfect. doing what I'm doing. I love it. So right. on just kind of the piggyback on um, the link. How much, how much data do you have on this fucking thing? Um, I mean, it's a one terabyte hard drive. It'll probably go yeah. for another few hours. All right. I have to delete the file afterwards so I can still use a computer. Um, I need a landing page for brokentrainer.com. Because right now it just goes the best I know, fitness. which we don't want. So could that be like a lead magnet? Absolutely. Ah, yes, because that's what I'm starting to... So what are you selling then? Are you writing a newsletter? Um, I... Because this is different. So what you're doing here has nothing to do with this place. Right. Nothing. Okay? I mean, I've got, I've got the, the rough draft of the book. I can just really focus on hitting that up. I like, I like the... Um, I've started journaling again, and I feel like this is a good way to kind of journal out outward like let people know what you're thinking about each day and what's you know twitter is yeah yeah it's you almost do like that a, on twitter it's, it's almost like it's almost like your uh your public journal like yeah you're journaling you're you're talking about your wins and losses your you know your, your but you have to remember that week. What, what you're trying to do on here is not for people to know you it's for people to know what you've done so you can help them so I could start, maybe my, my daily posts on here are, because I hear a lot of people, they take their posts and then turn them into a book. So I've seen that. So I'm creating content. I'm taking the time to write things, tell stories. Um, so let, let's back up. If you don't have anything for this right now, I would just take the link out. Okay. Because you're sending people to your gym page, and it's gonna be confusing. It's confusing. And no, then, no one's really interested in that. If you if you don't have something for them to go to yet, leave them here. Okay. Just don't even send them anywhere. Okay. And then they'll they'll, they'll build scroll everything down. in the background. Then I'll throw it in. There. Yeah, and then they'll scroll down and they'll look at your tweets and and so on. I like that. Yep. I'm not yeah. ready for not ready for the world to see what. Yeah. I'm don't on. send. You don't have to send them anywhere. All right. Cool. Easy enough. Boom. How much easier is that than building out a lead magnet right now and starting a newsletter? At, oh, butterfly. Sometimes you just take shit away yep. <laughs> instead of adding on just, more and more and more. Let this trickle in the background. While exactly I'm right. Things. Exactly right. All right. So the bubbling book, it can just be a bubbling brook right now and later it'll be a river and a... Cool. Exactly All right. right. All right. So let's... We'll, we're, we're good here. Good job. All right, everybody. we did our Twitter. Thank you, Brian, for helping us with help me with my Twitter page. And uh, if you guys have Can any questions, can you cut that down to ninety seconds? Yeah. <laughs> Is there an AI for that? <laughs> All right. Let's stop.